Hi, everybody. Hi. How many times in this do you say hi? A lot. <laughs> well, this is the, the next week. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. my yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> ruining the illusion. Yeah. Oh. Well, maybe our that, outfits we have, too. Yeah, we have okay. the same outfits on. Yeah. Dead giveaway, right? Right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode five of Harmony Reads. Already? Yes. Because oh, we goodness. did the first three segments. Yeah. And then the last mm. segment. And... Uh, was the stand, first standalone one, yes, yeah. and now we're on episode five. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. Have we been reading a lot? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so are we going to talk about the uh, the elephant in the room, Betsy, with Simone's knitting? <laughs> oh, I was like, <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Sheldon's <laughs> hanging out somewhere, but yeah. where's the elephant? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm just fine. It's, it's all good. I can do this as yeah. <laughs> I don't Apparently, even, I don't even pretend. I leave my fingers speed up, so does my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so small. Uh, yep. You're knitting and not looking. Yep. And doing color work. Not right now. It's just ribbing. Oh, okay. just ribbing. sorry. Yep. Yeah. Me oh, too. Just, just ribbing. A slacker. <laughs> 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 so everybody was fascinated. So if you don't watch the knitting podcast, then Simone is is showing the the output of her Harmony Read segment from the last Harmony Read segment. So yeah. in episode four, Simone was knitting a hat. Yeah. In color work. Not looking. <laughs> <laughs> so I think little say. sneaky peeks. Uh, yeah, yeah there peaks. were a few little yeah. peaks, but not many. I asked her on the way over. I was like, "Like, how did you hold that chart in your head?" She's like, "Oh no, I had it on my knee." And I was like, yeah. "I didn't even notice, and I'm sitting right here." Yeah, <laughs> craziness. Yeah. No chart, yeah. so you're not going to go into the color work no. on this one. Probably not. Well, how no. long are we going to talk? Okay, <laughs> not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we talk too long, I'll just have to make something up. Oh, oh there go. <laughs> so yes, Simone can knit without looking. Yeah, yeah, I can pretend to. Okay, but no. <laughs> you made the stitch and then looked at me. I know. Yeah, and okay. So I'm trying right now. That was a knit. Yeah. And okay, now I can... <laughs> no, not happening. <laughs> okay. So, but we are here to talk about books. Yes. yes. So, has everybody been reading? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, who wants to go first? Why don't you this time? I did last time. Sure. I am just continuing along with uh, Barbara King Sullivan, uh, The Poisonwood Bible. Okay. And... That is another book where the villain is somebody that you just really, really don't like. Well, isn't that kind of the definition of a villain, though? Yeah, but Maybe. it sometimes you can kind of see like little glimmers of hope. Oh, yes. Whereas the <laughs> no redeeming quality, quote unquote, villain in this is Reverend Price, and he's just such a jerk. Oh. <laughs> Like, oh, oh. oh. so yeah. what is, can you tell a little bit about the premise of the book without, like, giving, it without away? giving it away? So they're a family from the States who go down to the Congo before it's officially the Congo, before okay. it's the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Okay, um, on a missionary trip. And they're adventures or misadventures in Africa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But what are they? So they're missionaries? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they're living in a really tiny village in a, you know, kind of mud building, just like everybody else. Okay. And they're trying to navigate the lifestyle that people live okay. at that point in time Okay. in that area. Okay. And there's a lot of... Um, and do they well, come from a very different background? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so that's, they're the, like, that's the tension of the whole the thing. Cultural, yeah. The, the cultural Yeah, they're like yeah. Okay. Southern Baptist, U.S. Oh, and, oh, okay. You know, lifestyle is very different. Okay. And it's written, uh, it starts in 1959, oh, I believe. Okay. okay. So there's a lot of, like, political upheaval um, yeah. that I actually want to go and research oh, okay. now that I'm reading this book because okay. I don't know a whole lot about African politics. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So I oh, kind of cool. want to dig more into that. Yeah. Mm. There's yeah. a bit of a theme here today. We'll, oh, we'll really? catch on. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's actually, 
really good when a book makes you want to learn more yep. about what's ha- what history. actually yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of actual yeah. history. Yeah. And uh, you had mentioned in the last uh, episode that her writing is just beautiful. Yep. And a lot of people have commented that yep. they agree with you on that. So, yeah. It's yeah. very easy to read oh, and good. so easy that I have to stop myself. And do my other things. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I get it. Yeah. 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 So the pages just turn. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. And you just can't want to keep reading and reading, and you know you don't get your chores done. If you I was going to say, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you got to feed yourself, and you got to yeah go to the bathroom and yeah. all that. Yeah. All those necessities. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's uh, so that's good. And you've only got the one book on the go. Um, I have another one, um, but it's a nonfiction. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just so it's probably not interesting dry, for people. Dry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. And uh, Betsy, you started a new book? I did. I started one that was just, again, a random pickup at the library when I was there and had grabbed some Stephen King. So I finished Under the Dome. It's done. I needed to leave Stephen King for a while <laughs> and remember that not all of humanity are horrid, wretched creatures okay <laughs> so I didn't actually know what I was going into um so it's still it's called the girl who saved the king of Sweden by oh. Jonas Johansson John 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 I'm not sure yeah could also be totally pronounced the j differently completely yes. I'll just hold that for you if you want um so it is I believe it's called political satire oh, okay. is that I'll which follow. I've never actually really understood the definition of satire I've heard it the term used a lot, but I, it always kind of makes me like nod and smile, uh, okay. but not really. <laughs> I know it means that there's probably like comedic relief yeah. and, and such. So I just read that on the back. So it told okay. me what it was. Okay. Um, so it's good. So mine is, it started in the 1960s in South Africa. Okay. Oh, okay. So a young girl who has lost her parents and basically it's her survival story, but it's kind of like, He's having great fun. It's not a history. The, the characters are not historical. Um, some of the events are, and some of the, because he talks a lot about different presidents and prime ministers from other countries, they're actual mm-hmm. people. Um, the main character is not. And it's kind of her survival story, but she seems to have like, it's like this ironic combination of good luck, bad luck, oh, okay. where things are happening to her and she's landing in these places totally out of her control, but she's an incredibly intelligent young woman. And so to some extent, she's able to influence what's going on around her, but she's also very much stuck within oh, okay. the political oh, cool. system of South Africa at okay. that time. Okay. Um, and she is a black girl. And so yeah. there's a lot that goes with that. It discusses apartheid, okay. what's going on in the rest of the world, kind of the arms race to build nuclear oh, okay. bombs oh, is wow. included okay. in this. So it touches on little bits of what's going on in Israel and, well, Sweden, obviously, we, we get to Sweden. So it's kind of we're moving all around the world. Oh, okay. Learning kind of what was going on at that time as these countries are sort of competing sort of are, yeah. in very serious issues, but he's writing it in ironic okay. and comedic. Are you enjoying it? I am. Yeah. So it's not quite like one of those I can't put down sort yeah, of right. things. But it's also a few different people's stories, so I can read a chapter a night before I go to bed and feel like I read kind of a bit of a short story within a greater story. So that's, I like that, because it's Mm -hmm. allowing me to to sort of stick to a bit of a schedule. Yeah, and you can... can Stop, and yeah. you, you just you start again. It's okay. You just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. cool. yeah, she's meeting... It's it's a, The villains are more... Rather than being, like, malicious, plotting, really kind of horrid representations of humanity, they're more bumbling fools. Oh, okay. <laughs> that are kind of like, she's not sure how they're managing to maintain their positions. Oh, okay. Nor is anyone else, but it's just... It's a look at kind of a little bit the part of our world that works with... Um, Oh, what's like privilege and how right. that has worked mm-hmm. and right. it's touching on, on those different subjects. So it's, it's interesting, but it's also dealing with serious subjects in a bit of a comic way right. to make mm-hmm. it a little more palatable, a little right. less um, hard to take, even right. though it's serious issues that right. it's discussing. Oh, so yeah, so that it's, actually it's sounds very interesting. I'm yeah. just thinking the same thing. Yeah. 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 I'm like a book I would enjoy reading. Yeah. 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 <laughs> something completely different and yeah. not something I would necessarily pull off the shelf myself. So it was sitting out front. So maybe I'm 
talking about this book and everybody already knows about it. Oh, That's okay. a possibility. I don't I don't follow book trend reading things right. or anything. Mm-hmm. So it could be a really popular book yeah. and I don't even I, know it. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I started a new book because I finished World Without End. Yeah. So the the um did I had I finished it in the last episode? I don't think so. I, I had think you were just you were close yeah, because you yeah. and I talked about it afterwards. That's why I'm confused. But yeah, yeah. So I had 150 pages left. Yeah, and um, so I finished the 150 pages, and it was good. The ends all got tied up. The villain. We were discussing in the last episode if the villain would really get his just desserts. I think is exactly yeah. what I said, and yeah. absolutely he did. But as incredible as this sounds, after a thousand and ninety-three pages or whatever, it seemed rushed at the end. <laughs> yes, and you agreed. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you do you remember enough of it? Uh, you read it quite a long time. I ago. read it a while ago. Yeah, yeah, I don't, but I do know that feeling. And sometimes I wonder if like the authors just get bored of well, writing their story. Like, I'm like, okay, let's thing. just like wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of like uh, he just got tired of writing. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. Okay, that's enough. Let's yeah. just let's just kill this guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert! Oh. Let's just kill this guy and just get it over with. And then all of a sudden, it was like, and then he jumped like ten years. Yeah. So the the time frames were going like within like three or five year increments, and then all of a sudden it was ten years, yeah. and everything was wrapped up and explained and whatever. So yeah. Because at at 150 pages left to do, you really didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. And then within 150 pages, it was, all, it was all done. Maybe the publisher put the pressure on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Said, we're past due date several times. Yeah. yeah. It could have been a 2,000 yeah. page book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was, uh, it was good. And I like I really like the historical fiction thing, yep. so I'm going yeah. to read the third one. Yeah, but I just took a little pa- palate cleanser. Allowed. So yeah, uh, a really good. Well, she was started as a customer, but I would say she's a friend now. Came in and she said, "I'm making a contribution to your to your book reading," and she brought three books. Ooh. So I decided two of them were really more what I would have grabbed normally to read. And the third one was an Agatha Christie novel, but mm-hmm. because I've never read Agatha Christie or watched Miss Marple or the, the oh. uh, yeah, I don't know. No. I'm I'm I would even throw Midsummer Murders yeah. into that. Oh, yeah. I do have to say, yeah. I like Poirot more than I like Miss Marple. Yes, yes, he yes. is okay. quite the character. Okay. Yeah. So here, this slim little novel. <laughs> mystery novel it's, it's i'm reading uh, at bertram's hotel so this is it's, and i have no idea where in the timeline of miss, miss marple it this lands. is because i've never read any of the books and she has a lot well yeah. and the great part about it it doesn't matter yeah it really doesn't yeah okay each book is a standalone so here we are with a 251 page book and i'm on um page 59 yep and I'm like, okay, so when does something happen? Oh. So, so nothing has right. happened yet. Okay. So I can, I'm never, I feel like I'm never satisfied. Yep. <laughs> but Which you know what? I find sometimes it's like that, like the skinny books where you're like, oh, yeah, that's going to take no time to read. They're the ones that you struggle the most with. Like Jack Kerouac. 150 pages, and I'd rather poke myself in the eye with a knitting needle than read any more of his books. Oh, okay. You're yeah. not a fan then. I'm not a fan. I but mean, you are no a fan offense of... to people that yeah. enjoy Jack Kerouac. But Kierwell. you are a fan of Agatha Christie. I do love Agatha Christie. Yeah. 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 So I don't know if I just have the wrong book. I was going to say, I Maybe would say some are better than others. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And have you heard of this one before? I have not. Okay. <laughs> so it's about a hotel in London, and it seems to be a gathering place for like all old fogies, but I'm getting the, I'm getting the idea that somehow there's some, obviously there's a crime that's going to happen or it seems like there's a crime that's going on and you're just getting like, like little tiny drops of like, okay, there's something starting. Now things are starting to seem a little fishy. Okay. 
So I'm hoping that we're getting to the getting the to the meaty yeah. parts. The yeah, <laughs> so the parts that we actually find out. But but then I thought, you know, in appreciation, obviously she's a very popular writer. Mm -hmm. If maybe it's really kind of like you read through the whole thing and at the end she goes wham. <laughs> Sometimes she does. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then you're like. Now I got to go back and read the rest of the book again yep. there, because, to yes. pick out all yep. the clues that, that you missed. Yeah, that I missed totally. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, Very good at that. All right. So that's what I'm lo looking forward like, to. Then. Yeah. Really perfect art of a sentence you'll read that seemed like just a passing Absolutely sentence, and yeah. then yeah. you're like, that mattered. Oh, that's why. I okay. Like so that must be what's happening in this. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Okay. I can't promise because I don't know that one. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it just seems a bit, it's, now it's starting to seem a bit strange that there's nothing happening now. Like, so everybody's having tea and so Miss Marple. Conversations are happening. Describing yeah. her yeah. breakfast routine. And, but and did you notice it. that Miss Marple knits? Yes. She yep. does. Yes, she, she does. does. She yeah. put down her knitting to do something you know, that, yeah. yes, and yes. I was just like that, Miss Marvel knits. And does it come up in every novel? Almost? Pretty well, Pretty yeah. close. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is it just like a passing reference? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't think you in. really ever know what she's knitting. Sometimes or... she knits on pink worsted. Because oh. I remember there was one particular book, I don't remember which one, but she mentions it a couple times that she was knitting on something in pink worsted. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, all right. She, this one she just put down, I think she it was time for breakfast or yeah. something like that. Maybe so someday, she... Simone, you'll have to design the Marple's cardigan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think there are Marple cardigans oh, out probably. there. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. She, that's mostly what she wears when they have Oh, is that there. right? Yeah. Okay. So now too. I wonder, so... Uh, I don't necessarily want to ruin the book by looking at the the series, but I think it, is it the BBC that did the series? Mm, I think so. It's been done in a few different okay. ways. And is it good? There's more than one Miss Marple out there. Yeah, um, is, are they I haven't good? watched them all the way through. I'm trying to think. Oh, it's that good. Which ones I like the best? Well, they're again because they're standalone things. So oh, okay. I kind of no. Watched... You mean you watched episodes all the yes. way through? Yeah, but even the episodes, it. I think, are kind of hit and miss too. Yeah, yeah, I oh, think so. Like, there's a continuous thread, so there'll be like similar characters, yeah. or the same characters. But I think each comments, episode but, is a yeah. different crime. Yeah, because it's like having movie. standalone movies. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, I'll finish the first book first. Yeah. Now I'm a little bit more excited about it because okay. I think that I kind of figured out just now while I was <laughs> talking about it what's happening. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. So hopefully I'll be able to get through this and then say yes. I have been missing a big, there's a big hole in my life that has now been filled by educating my first name of the Christine Moore. I don't know if you're going to have that. that. Oh, okay. but, but, you know, I definitely want to have a cup of tea and some scones. Yes, yes. okay. Or muffins. Which, muffins. which I oh, just figured out that they're English muffins. Not, not American muffins. muffins. Yes, yeah. Or they, cranberry scones. Hint, hint. Yeah, they, they poo pooed, they poo pooed the muffins in America. Shit. It's time again. Yes. yes. Cranberry scones. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Betsy makes really, really good Shut guys. Up. Thank so, you. So, so inspirational that we had to come up with a yarn. <laughs> no, you came up with the yarn first, and then I brought in. Oh, okay. What your yarn added was the addition of a little bit of candied orange right. to yes. my scones. Yes. I hadn't been doing that. And then oh, the yarn okay. with a little splash of pumpkin in there. Uh, it's like, ooh, okay. pumpkin well, color. Came first, yeah. the yeah. chicken or the egg. Exactly. Okay, yeah. I'm figure it out. But now... In this episode, number five of Harmony Reads, we have a very special thing happening. And Betsy is going to read to us. <laughs> oh, man. That was not, not no pressure. No pressure. No. Yeah. No. So in the last episode. You should explain what it is yeah. what you've chosen. So I, in the last episode, I showed this book, The Best Loved Poems of the American People. And I explained that my grandmother had a very well-worn copy of it that my mother now has and that almost every female that was touched by my grandmother has a copy of this book in in our family so I just randomly after I finished World Without End I just ran, randomly opened up the book and started reading some poetry and I read a poem that is not it's not exactly happy but it was it's pretty poignant yeah and it's it yeah. uh, really kind of struck me and, but I can't read poetry because I sing it. 
Oh, if any of the words that rhyme automatically go ah, up oh, in the end. And right. I love that. Sure that. Ah, yeah. So Betsy has offered to read the poem, which I just I realized I probably should have read it to you beforehand to see if you actually better liked be it. good. Because huh. yeah. for better for worse, this is what it is. <laughs> Betsy off the cuff. Yeah. Wait, we can always edit this out. Oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. So, um, so I'm going to hand over sure. the, the book, and I'll, I'll show a picture of my mom's uh, coffee because she sent it to me it still has a dust jacket on it so you can see that it was it's the well-loved poems of the american people yeah so and we'll have um betsy start now are you ready sure so it is entitled which shall it be mm -hmm. by ethel lynn beers mm -hmm. wrote this one which shall it be which shall it be i looked at john and john looked at me Oh, dear patient John, who loves me yet, as well as though my locks were jet. And when I found that I must speak, my voice seemed strangely low and weak. Tell me again what Robert said. And then I, listening, bent my head. This is his letter. I will give a house and land where you shall live, if in return from out of your seven, one child to me, for I is given. I looked at John's old garments worn. I thought of all that John had borne, of poverty and work and care, which I, though willing, could not share. I thought of seven mouths to feed, of seven little children's need, and then of this. Come, John, said I, we'll choose among them as they lie asleep. So walking hand in hand, dear John and I surveyed our band. First to the cradle lightly stepped, where the new nameless baby slept. Shall it be baby, whispered John. I took his hand and hurried on to Lily's crib. Her sleeping grasp held her old doll within its clasp. Her dark curls lay like gold alight, a glory against the pillow white. Softly her father stooped to lay his rough hand down in a loving way. When dream or whisper made her stir, then huskily said John, oh, not her, not her. We stopped beside the trundle bed, and one long ray of lamplight shed athwart the boyish faces there, in sleep so pitiful and fair. I saw on Jamie's rough red cheek a tear undried, ere John could speak. Oh, he's but a baby too, said I, and kissed him as we hurried by. Pale, patient, Robbie's angel face, Still in his sleep bore suffering's trace. No, for a thousand crowns, not him. We whispered while our eyes were dim. Poor Dick, bad Dick, our wayward son. Turbulent, reckless, idle one. Could he be spared? Nay, he who gave bids us befriend him to his grave. Only a mother's heart can be patient enough for such as he. And so, said John, I would not dare to send him from her bedside prayer. Then stole we softly up above and knelt by Mary, child of love. Perhaps for her it would be better, I said to John. Quite silently he lifted up a curl astray across her cheek in willful way. He shook his head, oh, nay, love, not thee. The while my heart beat audibly. Only one more, our eldest lad, trusty and truthful good and glad so like his father no john no i cannot will not let him go and so we wrote in courteous way we could not give one child away and afterward toil lighter seemed thinking of that which we had dreamed happy in truth that not one face we'd miss from its accustomed place thankful to work for all the seven trusting the rest to the one in heaven <laughs> Isn't that awful? Yeah. <laughs> but they come to the right conclusion yeah. in the end. Yes, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. I read it and I was like, what is this? Oh. <laughs> okay, I, so 
context, I think, is probably a big factor. When yeah. you think of the, the time period that that would have been written, the yeah. idea that you would send out one child to maybe go live with a wealthy relative, yeah. and in turn, that relative would support your family. Right. So they didn't usually spell it out in, like, sell me your child. Yeah. That kind of is yeah. kind of what would happen. Yeah. And I love yeah. that this family decides they'd rather work hard and be on the poorer side and stay together yeah. than yeah. get everything yeah. they want and lose when they love. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just, I read that uh, one night, and I, I had never read it. Oh, read it that's a tearjerker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. In spite of the fact that a fly was Every flying. Every you yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 crazy. But you see it, I could never, that's why I, you had to read it. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you did an excellent job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is another one of these things I love. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this place is just amazing. <laughs> So we hope that you enjoyed that, even though it's it was it's a little, well. Also, it's like what we said; it was, yeah. it's a little tough, but it turned yeah. out all right in the end, and, yeah. you, and it was great to be read to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And so, anyway, and I can hardly wait to do the editing to see the look on my face because my face. I can. I was. I would think I was like this the whole time. I'm listening to it. It's like you're not allowed to cry. You're not allowed to cry. Oh. You're not allowed to cry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do we have anything else that we need to talk about? I think that's about it. I think that's it. Yeah. So the producer's saying, wrap it up, girls. <laughs> okay, so thanks for joining us on another episode of Harmony Reads, and we'll see you in two weeks' time. Bye. Bye. Bye.